Humans can be trained and conditioned quickly to significantly alter their behaviors, for better or for worse. Now, in psychology, there's a concept called hedonic adaptation, which means that people's happiness level and comfort level tends to very quickly acclimatize to whatever change may take place. So for better or for worse, we get used to stuff very, very quickly. This is part of why when people earn more money or get a big boost in their salary or anything like that, it makes them feel happy for a very short period of time and then they acclimatize and that simply becomes the norm for them. It doesn't uh, make them feel happy anymore. Similarly, when there is a massive change in the way that society operates and the way that things are, at the beginning, people don't like it, but then within oftentimes just a matter of weeks, people acclimatize to it and they get used to it. And this is another really interesting thing that I've noticed. Now, right now we are in the great state of Texas. So I love it. So we're able to be here tonight and we're able to do this without having to jump through all kinds of medical hoops and show, check, get people to check their papers at the door and to do this and to do that. However, there are still many places in the world, even places in the USA, which, where that's not the case. And oftentimes it's, I mean, it, it's because of a lot of the points that I've talked about already, but it's also because so many people over time have gotten used to, I hate this term, the new normal, right? They, they, they've gotten used to it and something about that makes them not want to go back to this old normal. They don't want to return to the way things were for the vast majority of their lives. So people can adapt very quickly psychologically. So I think the most important point to take from this as a lesson is to use your ability for rapid conditioning and habit forming to make positive changes rather than negative ones. You can take steps to improve your health, your wealth, your happiness, your relationships, and above all, and this is key, vital throughout this entire thing, always love your neighbor as yourself. A wise man once said that. <laughs> okay, point number 10. When sufficiently frightened, most people will not only accept authoritarianism, but they will demand it. This is a big one. This is a big one. Now, I'm from the UK. Um, I'm in the US right now, very happy to be here. But one thing that really shocked me over these past two years is how quickly Western countries, so-called liberal democracies, how quickly and easily they slipped into authoritarianism. That was, it's been really concerning to me. Now, when I saw stuff going crazy in um, you know, certain parts of the world, it was less shocking because it's understood that those governments are more authoritarian and that's more what people are used to. But it was really bewildering to me just how quickly this psychosis spread throughout all these different countries, all these bastions supposedly of liberty and freedom and democracy and tolerance. And I think the reason why that happened is because of fear. When you can strike fear into the hearts of people on an individual level, but especially on a collective level, then what happens, I believe, is, is pe people look up to some sort of higher power and higher authority to tell them what to do. And if they don't feel happy with the way other people are behaving, they will try to use that authority to put them in check as well. So lesson number 10 is that fearful people are easily manipulated and taken advantage of. So if you want to be able to think clearly, you have to be able to keep your emotions, especially fear, in check, especially when it is intentionally being pushed upon you. Okay, we're halfway there. Point number 11. Shout out to the conspiracy theorists. <laughs> After the past two years, I need some new ones because all of mine are just facts now. People who are dismissed as conspiracy theorists are often well-researched and simply ahead of the mainstream narrative. 
Okay, you got some whoops there. <laughs> now, I, I feel like if I could go back to 2019 and talk to people then and just tell them what was going to happen over the next couple of years, I know for sure they wouldn't believe me. And I'm 1 million percent certain I would have been called a conspiracy theorist. Um, now, there are people out there with completely insane kooky ideas that don't make any sense whatsoever. But this label, conspiracy theorist, is often stuck on people to prevent you from questioning or challenging anything. There's always a narrative. The corporate press will be pushing a certain narrative. There's a mainstream acceptable idea out there. And if you simply ask a question or practice second or third order of thinking and are able to see how step A is going to lead to step B, then you're definitely going to get called a conspiracy theorist. So lesson, num ne lesson number 11 is to be open-minded. Pay attention to different sources and listen to different viewpoints, even people who at the time may sound a little bit crazy at the moment because sometimes there could just be something they know that you don't. Yesterday's conspiracy theories are often today's news. Lesson number 12, it's another big one. Many people value safety and security more than they value freedom and liberty. Even if said safety is merely an illusion. Now, I believe that one of the biggest challenges we faced in the modern Western world is feels over reels. I'm sure uh, you've heard uh, a certain Mr. Shapiro often say, facts don't care about your feelings. But we're also, we're really living in this age where feelings don't care about your facts, right? So I can be the strongest woman in England. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, apparently, I can uh, potentially uh, menstruate, get pregnant, give birth, um, as long as I feel it, as long as I, as long as I believe it hard enough. Um, and no one is supposed to question that or challenge it or think it's a little bit weird. Um, now, we live in an era of illusion. So much stuff is about illusion and it's about appearances. And I think that when we talk about the concept of safety, I'm so sick of that word, by the way. Like, safety is generally a good thing, but if someone tells me, again, to stay safe or to keep safe, um, I might go crazy. Um, it's really been overdone. <laughs> Um, I think that so much of what has been happening over the past couple of years is honestly, it, it's theater. It's theater. It's to make people feel like they are safe or to make people feel like they're doing something even if not, right? Um, and we need a level of collective courage for people to break out of that because again, the majority of people want to be in the majority. So. Lesson number 12, and this is really key and this is very vital. It's something I say to especially my American friends and my American audiences. But this is to understand that freedom and liberty are rare. These are very hard things to come by. And it's easily lost when people do not value it and defend it in the way that they need to. Understand that once you lose freedom and liberty, it's extraordinarily difficult to get it back without a fight. So be very, very careful about what you give away. Lesson number, point number 13, is that hedonic adaptation occurs quickly, and once it sets in, it is difficult for people to get back to normal. I spoke on this a little bit earlier about on one of the other points, so I don't want to dwell on this one, but the key thing here is to understand and to not underestimate just what people can get used to, good or bad. What sounds crazy today could become a way of life in a matter of weeks or months. So let's 
always be making sure that we are moving forward and defending liberty and that we're not moving backwards. Point number 14. <laughs> this is a weird one, because I don't understand it, but it's something that I, I've, I've seen. I've seen this with my own eyes. And this is that a significant percentage of people actually enjoy being subjugated. And I can't remember who had the quote that it's hard to free people from the chains that they revere. Does anyone remember whose quote that was? I genuinely can't remember. Um, what was that? Okay. Frederick Douglass? Okay. Let's attribute it to him. I like Frederick Douglass. So. Let's say he said it whether or not he did. Um, but this is, a, this is a weird one. I think the key takeaway here is that people can actually become psychologically addicted to being dominated and being subjugated and being controlled. So don't assume that everybody values freedom and values liberty in the same way that you do. I know that we're here right now in Texas. I know this is a... This is a YAF event, so this is a more conservative-leaning audience. And uh, these are some of the biggest defenders of liberty out there in the world today. But not everyone values it the same way. So that's something to always keep in mind. 